If you don't give your body the materials it needs, this undigested food becomes food for SIBO bacteria. Let's keep going. So from the stomach, we are going to have the small intestines. And so, so from here, and so first, you are going to have, so here's your food coming on through. And you want, the, you want the food to be as digested as possible so that you make it as easy as possible for your body to digest and extract the energy out of it. So from the food that's coming in, next, the next step is bile. And your bile is not like your stomach acid where it has ingredients. Bile is going to be made by the liver no matter what your diet is, and it does require cholesterol, if you eat more cholesterol-rich foods, you just take off a heavier workload from your liver, which is making the cholesterol. If you have a zero cholesterol diet, your liver will make 100% of the cholesterol. If you have eggs in your diet, which is just an example, or just even more saturated fats in your diet, your, your cholesterol production from the liver is just going to be less. So, you know, I don't say whatever, but like you don't have to take care of it. Your body will do that. I do want to touch on that is incredibly important is that this is a downstream concept. Digestion is downstream. Stomach acid, then you have bile, then you have pancreatic enzymes. These are your downstream, and of course you have your salivary mouth enzymes at work, but that's a little bit out of the scope of this specific video for actual SIBO. And so we're just going to pay attention to this part here because this is what we're interested in. Your levels of stomach acid influence your body's ability and signals to release enough bile and to release enough pancreatic enzymes. If your stomach acid levels are too low, you will release less bile, meaning you will, you will digest your fats not as well. Worse, if you have low stomach acid, you create a low stimulant to pancreatic enzymes, and the pancreatic enzymes are going to be, uh, they will, as the food is making its way down, the pancreas is going to say, oh my God, this isn't digested enough, and it's going to work over time. And so what is the takeaway? If you have a hard time with bile production, you're not digesting fats well, or if you're having a hard time with your uh, pancreatic enzymes, you have to pay attention to your stomach acid first because this one, you can't do this part or this part well if this part's not doing well. This one has to be set up for success first before this one has the ability to actually perform well. Your level of stomach acid if you have low stomach acid levels, so low stomach acid, uh, low pathogen clearing, low protein breakdown, low bile stimulation. So, so as the acidity from here is going to trigger the gallbladder, which is the gallbladder, which is going to store the bile, and depending on how much acidity is in this section will tell the gallbladder how much bile to release. If, you, if this signal is not acidic enough, this is going to release less bile, which means that as this moves its way on down, it's less digested because you haven't released enough stomach acid to digest the proteins and you haven't released released enough bile to digest the fats and so what happens is that as you get here and it's not well digested you have undigested food something is going to eat this food if you don't give your body the materials it needs to digest this this undigested food becomes food for SIBO bacteria microbes will eat it and so, because your gut has microbes, whether you like it or not, and if it has access to food, it will eat it, just because that's, that's, that's nature. That's the natural order of things. 
let's say this gets into the system and it's still undigested, then afterwards we get to the pancreas where you have pancreatic enzymes that are being released. Uh, one thing that I do want to, I don't want to say give a disclaimer about, but I'm giving you a helpful backed up view of this. We do not need to memorize hormones. That's my job. We do not need to memorize positioning of where this happens in the body. We do not need to memorize. We don't need to tell, I don't need to tell my pancreas to do this. You provide the materials and your body takes care of the rest. Don't let this overwhelm you. What I've said, all of this, what I've said so far, what this means, you need to eat enough, you need to have enough chloride, B vitamins, zinc, and protein. And then bile gets stimulated through, through the stomach acid release. And you can help bile by with cholesterol intake, with choline intake, and through consuming fats. When you eat a fat, it sends a signal to release more bile into the system. You can also help with other herbals and other like certain types of like plants. When you eat a pork chop, you are served it with uh, like mustard and these types of like plant compounds, these mustards, these culinary techniques that we use to help with this digestion so that it's not only stomach acid and only bile that's taking care of it. You have, there are other techniques. And so I'm trying to help you understand what the process is because when you know what's going on inside of you, it's easier to troubleshoot. And so that's what the main goal of this video is and also to be educational and be helpful. But in any case, you can help stimulate bile release through, which is going to emulsify the fats. It'll break down your fats into smaller pieces so that when it gets to the pancreas, the pancreas digests all three. So protein, fat, and carbs. But the bile is going to help take your your big fats, and it's gonna break them down into smaller fats. So that when it gets to the pancreas, these fats, these small fats are easier to break down. So when you break down these fats right here into smaller fats, you then open, you open up the fat molecules so that the fat soluble vitamins, so vitamin a, D, E, and K can be opened up and released and, the, and it helps the body have access to be able to grab onto these vitamins that are fat soluble. So moving on from bile, so you're, you're here and let's say that you have undigested food and we're getting our way to the pancreas. So the pancreas is gonna break down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Just like stomach acid, which also breaks down protein, is also going to require more, more amino acids, acids to break down protein, uh, zinc, B vitamins, there's, and there's magnesium in there somewhere. The enzymes, all of these three, because it, what is an enzyme? An enzyme is a protein byproduct. It's, it's made up of amino acids. And so all of these are going to require amino acids. Excuse me if that was not clear beforehand. Um, but in order to make all of these enzymes, they're all going to have their own specific requirements. That's not your job. Your, your job is to provide enough vitamins, minerals, hydration, proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and movement stimu st stimulation, going out, running, working out, providing this and letting your body do the work. Your body knows what to do when it's provided the ingredients and the tools required for this to work. Your body is ready for this to work. Your body is ready for it. It will work. It will work when you give the right thing to work. And so uh, you're also going to make sure that you're wanting to have, again, enough B vitamins, enough zinc, and enough protein to support these systems right here. So, and again, just like the bile being stimulated, when we hit the, uh, so the pancreatic enzymes, and so let's say that this is our food, 
if our stomach acid is still too low, low stomach acid means weaker pancreatic enzyme release. In other words, strong stomach acid production, strong pancreatic enzyme release means well digested food going through your system means no food available for your SIBO bacteria, means they get starved, means you establish proper digestive patterns, systems, down flow throughout the body. These bacteria, they reestablish, they go back down, they get pushed back down, and you don't experience bloating, gas, indigestion. Because why, why are you experiencing gas, indigestion, constipation, diarrhea, you know, whatever the symptom is, it's because something here, something here, or something here isn't working. And that symptom is the byproduct of this being wrong, this being wrong, or this being, or this being wrong. But there are tools that you can use and techniques that you can use to help make your digestion as easy as possible. You want to make it easy. All right, so let's bring this back to a SIBO aspect. From the part one video, you should remember this little drawing that I did where you have your bacterial safe haven of your microbiome, which is in the large intestine, and then you have your small intestine which is right here, which is, which is wrapping around and is doing the digesting and your bacteria, your bacteria, if, if these harsh chemicals, stomach acid, bile, pancreatic enzymes aren't sufficient enough, these bacteria say, oh, okay, I can come join the party up in here and join and join. And so how you can effectively address your SIBO infection by reamplifying your body's ability to produce stomach acid. Stomach acid is harsh, but and when you have enough stomach acid, you create an abundance of bile being released into the digestive tract and bile is harsh towards microbes. And then as that keeps going and you go farther down into the pancreatic enzyme area, those enzymes are also harsh for these, uh, for these microbes. But then also, besides them being harsh, if these foods are, if your foods are being broken down enough, there isn't food left over for the SIBO to take over and they get starved out. And so it's these, it's this, I don't say multi-prong attack on these microbes, but it's not, I don't say it's not hard, but like if you were to have enough of the sufficient foods required to make these systems work properly, you have multiple things that are addressing the SIBO uh, infection. You have, you have enough of the stomach acid, which is breaking down the food, which is meaning that there's less protein for the SIBO to uh, come about. You have, you have, enough digested food and you maybe maybe you have a fermented food in there and you have that acidity being brought through because fermented foods are acidic and you make a, an inhospitable environment for SIBO to stay and so it naturally it naturally through natural digestion and your ability to eat well will flow back down and so one thing to also keep in mind is that this maybe is one of the harder concepts of this, but having enough, well, there's multiples, having enough uh, herbs and spices, these types of natural culinary practices that we use are how we also help with our antimicrobial. You don't need to have an oregano oil capsule. You need to just learn how to cook with herbs and spices and it will help reestablish the, the natural balance of your bacteria here. This will be my last soap box. 
So your, your micros, so your micronutrients, your vitamins and minerals, and then you have, you'll have, I'll say plants, plant medicines, plant compounds, plants, you know, whatever, polyphenols, anything along those lines. With your micronutrients, your vitamins, your minerals, and these plant compounds can be used by the body if the body has an abundance of macros. So proteins, fats, and carbs. What the idea is, you do not want to be uh, hypo, hypocaloric. Uh, hypocaloric equals bad. If you, if you are in a hypocaloric state, you are not giving your body the ability to have enough calories, pure calories to address, to address any kind of problem. Someone that has been in a systematic hypocaloric state for way too long, first of all, they're not getting enough proteins, fats, and carbohydrates to stimulate muscle growth. Uh, this, this, this is expensive. This costs, this costs money. This costs food money. This costs money. If you are not paying your rent, your mortgage, if you're not paying, if you're not eating enough food with enough nutrition in it, your body is going to be ill-equipped to address an infection. And your body has the ability to reestablish proper digestion and good digestive flow throughout the body when you eat sufficient amounts of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And a future video will be on carbohydrate choices and why certain carbs can cause certain kinds of uh, problems for those with SIBO. Carbs are still important. They still need to be used, but in more smart ways. And so, and this is why when I talk about SIBO, this is very general, but every single client that I have had that has some kind of digestive problem, all of them have their own eating habits, their own uh, meal times, their own activity level, and their own just overall lifestyle. And so, yeah, everyone is a snowflake and everyone, if you, maybe, maybe the general will work for you individually, but a lot of the times there is an argument for making the approach uh, personalized. I noticed that certain things didn't work well for me and so I had to adapt and I made myself my own personalized approach and, and that's how it worked for me. But if you are wanting, but if you, if this is maybe overwhelming, first of all, I understand it makes sense. I would be overwhelmed too, uh, but I've just been doing this for years. So now it's just gotten easy for me, but I would love to be of assistance here because I know what it's like to have had just horrible digestion and be frustrated and not understanding and approaching my diet in a way that is holistic, that provides enough uh, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. I needed, I needed the carbohydrates. Low carbohydrates makes digestion slower. And I had a harder time with getting the food through my body fast, fast enough. And then providing enough of the vitamins, minerals, and plant compounds. All of it is good. So the main goal of this video is to show you like this is what causes SIBO and this with enough, with enough protein, enough vitamins, minerals, and plants, uh, enough proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, enough bile, enough, enough enzymes to starve off the SIBO. This is how you address SIBO slowly but surely. And I don't want to say it's food is hard. Food can be hard, but Adopting one good habit at a time is, it turns into two good habits, it turns into three, it turns into four, it turns into five, and it turns into, I don't have SIBO anymore. And that's what happened with me personally, and that's why I'm here doing this, trying to be helpful. So um, if you have questions, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Matthew Kress of Kress Dietetics, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.